Greetings everyone, CCX here. Welcome back to the DuckTales Remastered playthrough. The last part we end up finished off the Himalayas, and in this part we're going into the wonderful and infamous level that everyone loves, the moon. It's about as basic as it sounds, but the thing is, is that it ends up having by far the best overrated music. Yes, I'm gonna call it overrated because that's exactly what it is, it is very overrated. And, yeah, I'm not going to say that it's not overrated, because then I'll be lying to myself. Because if I said it, that it, think of it as Final Fantasy VII. Well, okay, how about this? Think of this song being like the ice cap zone in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. The, um, I'm not really sure what else I can go ahead and relate it to. What else is another overrated soundtrack? Hmm. I guess, ah, uh, Stinklebrush Symphony or Bramble Blast in DKC2, that's an overrated sound piece, but, you know what, eh, eh, I, I, I can't really say anything about it, but, I'm pretty sure that this thing, this game, the, the sound piece, like, the remix, the remaster version of this theme is just... So calm, so beautiful, so... Ugh. It makes you wonder that this is the reason why people love music in video games so much, because this song is one of the reasons that, yes, I really want to... Well, you can't really... Well, you know what? You never really know that. This might actually be like the one of those reasons to become a music major. Now, the thing about this, the moon area, is that we didn't really have an explanation on why aliens were here, but now we have ourselves an explanation, and, um, yeah, uh, our friend just got abducted. By the way, I don't know Fenton, or... I, I know that he's basically supposed to be the thing that we're supposed to use to be able to blast the, um, passageway for the rat, but... I don't really know much about him. Like, I, I know Gyro is basically the um, tech geek who just built stuff for Scrooge, and that's really about it. But anyways, enjoy the theme. I've never seen a gem like this before. Get rich by being okay, I can't really go ahead and actually not talk throughout the entire thing because it'd be kind of dumb. <laughs> it'd be no commentary, I mean, seriously. But now we're finally getting into the meat of the section where you you end up, um... When you end up starting this in the NES version, you end up having... Well, that guy just flew to his death, that's good. But you end up having this part end up being here automatically. Now the goal of this area, we need to go ahead and find Fenton. So we can go ahead and save his ridiculous behind. And we can see a part there that's, you know... I don't know why they end up taking apart his gizmo, his gizmo suit. But I'm pretty sure there's a reason for it. But anyways, we're going to get ourselves an extra cutscene. Which is not really that extra. It's kind of just, you know... I'm just kind of mediocre. If you actually go through this area, though... Alright. Yeah, well, nah, okay. And there goes the rats. Oh, those lovable rats. <sighs> I really hope none of these rats ends up finding some mysterious cheese that we're looking for. Fenton is a nerd. He is such a nerd, but he can become a badass superhero. It's always the nerds that become the badassery. Of badass, which really makes no sense to be honest. I mean, I guess it's like it, it's one of those tropes that happens. But he ended up turning on the gravity system. This would have actually been a little bit good, cool to have in um in the game. But the thing is, is that it's not really. It's only just part of this cutscene here. Because if you end up playing the game, when you beat the game, they allow you to have the quick cinema option, which basically lets you play the game as it was intended in the NES version. And you basically skip this part. But the goal is, is that, you know, you just flick this, and then you just go ahead and um, flick this switch right here, and 
and this one, and then you're done. It's, it's about as easy as one, two, three. <laughs> uh, now, the parts, you basically only found one of them before, but in this one, you're finding three parts. So now we're going to continue to progress through the moon base, which is what I'm calling it, even though, yes, you are on the moon, and I'm not going to be, like, getting anything in here. I'm just gonna actually going to just progress through this area as quickly as possible. Because the thing is, is that, well, this I'm more so just showcasing the game for you guys at this point. And if you guys want to literally um, play the game yourself, I recommend it. Like, DuckTales Remastered is a very, very wonderful game. It ends up having... All the touches that the original has, there's it's just graphical updates for the enemies, Scrooge, and you know everyone else. Everyone has a graphical sprite upgrade, and the music and the remastered music is fantastic. If I mean, if you don't like the remastered music for some reason, you can go ahead and end up playing the NES version. When you have to beat the game, sadly, to actually access the NES version sound piece. So, you know, there's also that, too. So, you know, if you really want to go ahead and play the game, it's a very well-done platformer. Like, it's a very one-and-done sort of platformer. Like, I'm not gonna lie, when you beat the game the first time, it's kind of one of those type of games. And there's, like, a lot of games that do that, when you end up just playing it once and you never really play it again. Here's where you actually find one of the parts of Gizmo Ducks' um, contraption. Where you have to go ahead and platform through all these sections to be able to actually find it. Except you were literally finding a key and not really much of a wheel. It was a key to actually progress through the area. But, you know, it's what it is. <laughs> this area can be a little bit dangerous because, you know, bottomless pits and all that. Because, you know, you don't have much of any leeway. So you have to go and make sure that all your platforming is projection. Is, um... Precise projection. That makes no sense. I know. It's awesome. Anyways, let's head back. And we want to go this direction first. The reason why I didn't really bother to head back into where the other piece was located, well, because of the fact that there was no point. Oh, yes, that's right. There is one thing I still need to look for, and it's the treasure chest. But first, we have Miss Beakley, who, for some reason, also got captured by aliens. I'm not gonna even ask, because I'm kind of... I, I don't... I'm, seriously, this woman is weird. <laughs> she is crazy. Would you ship Magicka the Spell and Scrooge McDuck together? Eh, I don't know. I mean, that wouldn't really make much of any sense, considering... Why is that a question, I ask? Because, um... To be honest, they're not the, they're not the same. And I highly doubt Magicka is um, the same age as Scrooge. Then again, I don't know. Man, didn't Scrooge already had a wife already? Eh. We don't really know much about Scrooge's um, past, past life, I should say. Anyways, let's actually continue on forward and are watching out for these wonderful enemies. These enemies were, those um, mechanical duck enemies were actually annoying in the original game. Because they literally took forever to literally progress through the um, these um, pipe, these areas right here. I mean, right now, they don't really take that long to actually pro um, get past it, thank God, because if they did, oh boy, we'd be here forever. Anyways, want to hit this, go up here, and you end up finding more stuff. More stuff for your banking of bunnies. Ah, another wonderful ice cream. There is a section where if you end up dropping down, you will go ahead and actually get yourself killed. Because the game's not going to really warn you about the bottomless pit down below. I mean, why should they? I mean, nobody should warn you about bottomless pits. It's kind of what they do. Let me see. Okay, we're in nine minutes and we're still in this place. I do like when you actually climb the rope, you get the little, a uh, little bit of a rope animation going on. I like that. I am, hmm, you know what? I don't think there is a heart piece for the moon. Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm getting it wrong. It's the moon, the, this area does not have the heart piece. The, um, area that has the heart piece is actually located in the next, the second half of this area. Because unlike in the um, original game where you just progressed and you just got the 
you just went to the um, cave area. After the cave area, you only got a, you kind of went through some sort of passage, and then you just got to the boss. Now, there's some extra stuff that you have to do for this one, because, you know, story progression and all that. And the thing is, though, is that I don't really think that you could actually play this game out of, um, play the levels out of order. Mind you, I don't know why you would want to play the game. Uh, out of order. Everyone always does them all in order. Always does the Amazon first, the um, Transylvania second, the African Mines third, you know, and vice versa. It's like it's never nobody ever goes in a op in a different way. And to be honest, I don't really blame them because that's kind of silly. Anyways, when I come back down here. I will be able to find the last helmet. Love how that guy just died because we're in a cutscene. Cutscene immunity, my friends, ends up helping us throughout everything. And damn, through how love it. We're actually almost done with the game, though, because after the moon, we end up in the last area of the game, and then that's really it. And the final boss for this game is actually the same boss from the NES version, except with a little bit of an upgrade. I say a little bit, because, yeah, uh, he has to have an upgrade. There's a way for that guy to just fall to the bottom's pit, because why don't that? Oh, yeah, we need to head back. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> I forgot we needed to actually head back to him, because that makes total sense. This guy's going to keep following me, because he's a stalker. Uh, but the moon section is very pretty. You know, you know, we've already landed on the moon. And we already know that it looks like cheese, which is hilarious considering what we're getting in this area. Two dollar bill under the back seat. Wow, that is such a lie. Why just send Gyro back onto the ship? Because he does not need to know who you are. Like, seriously? You think that, but he's maybe smart, but eh, he ain't that smart. <laughs> he's really smart for his own good. Because a lot of people can be smart for their own good. Remember, kids, being smart is good. Just trying to put two things together is just annoying. Oh, my head is hurting me. Ugh, I'm getting to that point where I don't even have, like, no sleep at all. Now this scene is now this section is a bit different. Unlike before, if you go all the way to the right section of the area, you kind of just progress, and he Gizmo Duck shows up and blows up the um box. But no, not in this one. In this one, he actually you know he ends up um two million dollar bill, and you're just gonna put it. Okay, whatever. Anyways, Gizmo Duck now will be following you throughout the entire stage. Think of him as the this this um this area is Bubba, so he'll be shooting everything that comes in your way. Yes, he's just that badass. Except be careful though, because Gizmo Duck's missiles kind of take freaking forever to freaking get the enemy. So yeah, you may think that he can go ahead and stop the enemies, but you know sometimes at times he won't even do that. I'm gonna wait. Okay, that missile just literally just went after him. Okay. Uh, Alright, cool. I'm just going to let Gizmo Duck just take care of everything. Because, why not? Now, I could just rush past Gizmo Duck and just, you know, bum rush throughout all the enemies. But, why would I want to do that? Also, don't worry about off-screen Gizmo Duck. He's fast enough to actually catch up to you. I'd be kind of really dickish if he wasn't. Anyways, ah, I wonder if this is where the cheese is. It's not like the obvious symbol of the cheese icon ends up giving that away. Okay. All that just to... Alright, that's, um, that's cool. Yay, we did it. No. Oh no, it's the Beagle Boys, and they showed up out of nowhere. Uh, 
Flint Hart. That's his name. His name is Flint Hart. You know what? That makes much more sense because um, pronouncing Gloom Duck kind of is Flint Hart Gloom Duck. Gloom Gold. Gloom Duck. Yeah. He's Irish, you know. And he's the second rival to Scrooge McDuck. And he shall own up to everything and there goes Gizmo Duck to go ahead and um stop him for some reason. Eh. Oh well, whatever. What are the Beagle Boys gonna do? They're Beagle Boys. It's not like they're really that hard to really handle. I mean Scrooge, you've been handling them since day one. Anyways, in this section, don't really worry about the random light show. It's not really nothing. It, you think that it's going to be one of those, oh no, we got to actually not get caught. No, it's not. That'd be really dumb if it was. Anyways, you want to get this treasure right here. I'd rather wait. So, clock it. Okay, or I can just miss entirely. That works too. I love the particle effects. Well, not particle, the, um,. Gravity effect of the uh, rocks. I like that. That's a that's a nice, it's a nice touch. Seriously, this place was really really boring back in the NES days. But then again, a lot of stuff was boring back in the NES days. Eh, maybe there is wrong. Maybe there is no um, actual thing. All right. Oh wait wait wait. Hold on. And yep, there it is. The last heart piece in the game. Well, actually, hmm. I'm actually kind of thinking if there is one more hard piece that we're missing, but there's probably not. If there is, then well, eh, we'll find it. We're I'm, I'm actually kind of wondering if it is in the last area. It's probably not. But anyways, the point is that we are now up to the boss of the moon. The moon, it can be a very short level as well. Like I said, the longest level that we had, hey look, it's a rat, is the, um, the... Amazon and it turns into a gigantic mutant rat this is a thing well why do we want this cheese again if it turns you into a gigantic mutant anyways the point of this rat now is that it ends up having it jumps left and right but then after a while once it starts glowing once you hit it three times three times I say it will glow green and it'll start to teleport and do its Super Spin Dash. You want to go ahead and actually try to get on the uh, elevated platform so you don't end up getting hit. Make sure you actually pay attention to where it's coming from. It also starts to get faster, too. Because, well, it is a rat, after all. And rats do get faster. Seriously, if I saw this kind of rat in my damn house, I'm kind of, I'm kind of losing my shit. <laughs> anyway. This is a very simple boss, just like every boss that we've been fighting. Like, no, the bosses. Like, there is one thing I can say. All the bosses' strategies end up changing in um in this in this version because they're not the like they're not like the same one from one boss. They do have the same exact thing going on for them, but other than that, they're the same exact boss. Like the green, like the green speed speed up thing. That wasn't in the original game. It was basically just a regular rat boss that you just beat the crap out of normally. And it's never gonna change. Oh, crap. I'm getting my ass kicked. Okay, maybe I should actually start paying attention now. Because I got, like, two hearts left. And that's not cool. Usually I never really get my ass kicked by this rat so much. But again, it's because I'm recording myself. And one always screws up when they record. I really don't understand that. Why is that a thing? Like, seriously. And it's over. And we kill him like Mega Man style. And then it just reverts giant back to normal. No I I don't get it. <laughs> giant moon rat. And... Okay. So now we have the green cheese of everlasting life. And that is the end of the moon. I like that the background looks like a bunch of eyes in the back. But yeah, that is the end of the moon, guys. And that is the last level of DuckTales Remastered. But, of course, if you guys play the NES version, you guys always know that there is one more level. Except this one level was never in the original game. This one level is actually an exclusive level to Remastered. The reason how I know that it's a re it's a um it's a um 
unique level to remaster it because in the original game you just went to let's just say it's very stupid you went to transylvania and you know that mirror that you technically couldn't take before yeah you take that mirror you go through it and then you end up fighting the final boss yeah and this one they decided to add in their own as way forward decided or way forward capcom whoever decided to add their own exclusive level into the game and it also has an 8-bit rendition if you want to hear it, and it's a very wonderful level, and it's very difficult too if you, you know, don't know what you're doing with the platforming section, but it's fairly simple. But anyways, I like this, because, you know, beforehand you kind of just got like a random message that says, hey, they did, they actually never even take taken um, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, they kind of just, you know, just said, hey, if you want to stop me or something, come to Transylvania and we shall make stuff happen. <sighs> it's Magicka to Spell! Bum bum bum! Seriously, I mean, the thing about Magicka is I do love her design. Like, she just, she's not only as a mage, she's like a magician with very magical powers. And it shows, too. Like, look at that. She has the capability of uh, literally paralyzing everybody. Like, goddamn. <laughs> uh, okay, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold the phone. If you can paralyze people, why don't you just do that and just take Uncle Screw? <sighs> I swear, supervillains are dumb. Like... What what is the point of paralyzing them if you can just if you can just do this right now you can freaking just take I mean I get it that you don't really know where his coin is his dime is I get that but it's still pretty stupid well and there goes all our treasure all our hard work treasure <sighs> you know what it's kind of like. Almost, almost like Dr. Wily just saying, Ha, huh, sorry, Mega Man. The robot masses you defeated were all of illusion. And for any reason you destroyed them, it didn't really have, like, no impact on anything. I like how Gloom Duck looks so damn sad. <laughs> okay, now we have a purpose of actually getting our... Of going to said mountain. And she turned them into pigs. Alright. Seriously, I mean, she because she could do practically everything. Why don't you just do a magic spell to brainwash Scrooge to find his dime? What is it? Is his brain his, his one? Just come on, like you have the you have these abilities. Use them. Uh, whatever. You know what? That's probably one thing I don't understand. It's like. Magic of the Spell, as much as you are kind of my favorite ca character in DuckTales, you really have some very stupid ideas of trying to get what you want. Stole them? You ended up... Well, yeah, you stole them, which I'm more impressed about. It's kind of making me wonder, who the hell, how the hell did you steal them? Where the hell's our butler? You know what, we feel like Batman now, where Alfred is just gone. <laughs> it's like, where is Alfred? Oh, he's tied up. Really? Oh, oh, that's, um, that's great. I mean, I love that. That's, uh, that's terrific. I don't like it. Ten cents next to the safety of my boys. Yeah, that and also because Donald will kill him. Well, hell no, Donald's sister will kill him if he doesn't get them back. Oh, I'm pretty sure nothing horrible is going to happen. Oh yeah, I forgot, we... Oh, okay, no, never mind. Okay, I guess this is actually going to be a longer part, guys. Because I actually did forget that this, they actually don't let you get a break within, um, parts. Huh. Alright, so I guess we're going to the final level. Cool. Actually, you know what? It's kind of dumb. Never mind. I don't want to... Do I really want to just stop it here? Yeah, you know what? I will. I mean, there's, like, really no time limit. 
But, okay, since, you know, the game wanted to go ahead and do that, I'm not literally going to just continue onwards. It's already been like 25 minutes already. Anyways, I've been CCX, and the next and final part of DuckTales Remastered, we are going to take on the final boss of DuckTales. I've been CCX, and I'll be seeing you guys in the final episode of DuckTales Remastered. Catch you all next time. See us.